We have major breaking news in the story of the Trump supporter who was shot and killed in Portland. Most of you probably already know by now there was a Trump supporter walking down the street. There's a video where we hear someone yell, we got him right here. We got a couple right here. Several shots. The man is dead. The man who shot flees. Now, the man accused of doing the shooting, Michael Reinol, is dead. He was killed by police in what they say was a shootout the other day when they tried serving a warrant. But that was uh, before this. He actually gave an interview to Vice News, and they aired this last night, where he basically said it feels like the beginning of a war, like his shooting, like him shooting this Trump supporter was the start of a war. He said it felt like civil war was just around the corner. And I think a lot of people feel this way. Now, many people believe that the shooting of the Trump supporter was a targeted execution because there's a longer live stream of what happened. You can see these people walking down the street. They come across some Trump supporters. Then you hear the yelling. We got them. We got a couple right here. Pull it out here. Yeah. Bang, bang. There's different uh, accounts as to what people think happened. But based on the fact that this dude was at a decent amount of distance, you can tell in the video, they're not they're not super far away. They're not really close to each other, but they're they're far enough away to where it does not seem that this guy is being threatened at all. And then he flees and he goes into hiding. He, he's claiming in this interview with Vice that the police were working with these right wing groups, so he couldn't turn himself in. And he also I'm going to say, I mean, he flat out lies the framing of his interview that the Trump supporters and all these vehicles were armed and surrounding a person of color and he had no choice but to defend him is just patently absurd. This guy, I believe, clearly unhinged and out of his mind. I think perhaps he thought regular cars in the street were Trump supporters and that he had no choice to gun down a guy minding his own business, walking down the street. Sure, fine, whatever. The breaking news is that the police have, have, uh, have killed him. They went to serve a warrant and they say that he started shooting at them, at, at the cops. The cops fired back. There's a video that emerged showing uh, what, what appears to be around dusk. So it's still daylight out and they're performing CPR on what appears to be Michael Reinel on the ground. I want to read to you about what he was saying in the, in the Vice News interview. But first, let's start with the, the, the breaking news from the New York Times. What we know about the death of the suspect in the Portland shooting. The suspect, Michael Forrest Reinel, 48, was killed by law enforcement agents just five days after the deadly shooting of a right wing protester. From The New York Times, they write law enforcement agents in Washington killed a suspect on Thursday night in the shooting death of a right wing activist in Portland last week. The latest development in the protests and counter demonstrations that have escalated tensions in the city and drawn the nation's attention. The suspect, Michael Forrest Reinel, 48, was shot by officers in Lacey, Washington, as they tried to arrest him. Law enforcement officials said the right wing, uh, they, they said the right wing activist Aaron J. Danielson, 39, had been shot five days earlier in Portland and an arrest warrant had been issued for Mr. Reinel earlier on Thursday. Mr. Reinel's death is also playing out during a broader confrontation between opposing visions for the nation as protesters demanding racial justice clash with right wing activists on the streets in events that have become increasingly politicized ahead of the presidential elections. They say federal officers were pursuing the suspect. Mr. Reinel was shot by officers from a federally led fugitive task force. Four law enforcement officials familiar with the investigation said on Thursday around 7 p.m. in a residential area of Lacey, a town southwest of Seattle. According to L Lieutenant Ray Brady of the Thurston County Sheriff's Office, which is investigating the shooting of Mr. Reinel, a police team was in the area looking for a homicide suspect, though the lieutenant did not mention Reinel by name. The suspect left an apartment and entered a vehicle where he was approached by the police officers. A confrontation followed, Lieutenant Brady said. As they attempted to apprehend him, there was gunfire, he said, saying that four officers fired their weapons and that the suspect was thought to be armed. Shots were fired into the vehicle and the suspect fled. Then more shots were fired. The Portland police had issued a warrant for Mr. Reinald's arrest earlier on Thursday, according to the Olympian, a local news outlet, and, it, uh, and had enlisted U.S. Marshals to find and arrest him. They say Mr. Reinel had spoken about the Portland shooting. Reinel, who was a, who is from a suburb of Portland, was a father of two who had said that he was an army veteran and had been a familiar face of the protests for weeks and described himself in posts on social media as an anti-fascist. He also previously described providing security at the protests. Now, I believe others have tried to source this information and there's no records. I, I can't remember which source this was. I'll, hopefully I can, I can, you know, I'll pull it up in one of the next stories, but 
What I read basically said they couldn't find any record this guy was actually in the army. Quote, I am 100% Antifa all the way he posted on Instagram in June, referencing the loose collection of activists that have mobilized to oppose what they see as fascism or racism. That same post was also laced with violent messages. Now, I want to clarify this as well. And the New York Times says what they see as fascism or racism. Some more context is necessary. These people think literally everything is racism, and I'm not exaggerating. They believe that time is racist. I am not exaggerating. There are... I'm not, I'm not kidding. They, so yes, they're going on attacking anyone. We truly have an opportunity right now to fix everything, he wrote, but it will be a fight like no other. It will be a war. And like all wars, there will be casualties. This man was unhinged, dangerous, and insane, armed, and he had apparently been arrested twice before for having an illegal weapon. Now we can make a second amendment argument and say that's irrelevant to the shooting at this point. But I think if they're going to allow this man to be cut loose when he was posting, there will be war and casualties. And he was showing up to political rallies armed. This is on the fault of, of the DA in Portland. In an interview with Vice News, Mr. Reinold appeared to admit to the shooting of Mr. Danielson and said he believed he had acted in self-defense. Had I not acted, I am confident that my friend and I am sure I would have been killed because I wasn't going to stand there and let something happen. He said in an interview, this is just ridiculous. Watch the video. He's, 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 he's standing at a decent distance. No one is lunging at him. No one is, is, is screaming at him. No one's saying anything. And it actually, uh, according to the witness, they were walking the other direction. The friend of the victim said they turned around when he or, or these Antifa guys yelled at them. So if we go by the witness statement and the video, it does not seem to corroborate what this man said. He basically describes like a bunch of vehicles with armed Trump supporters. That's just not the case. In fact, a vehicle that pulls up right behind him after the shooting had Antifa people inside of it, or what appears to be Antifa, not Trump supporters. Portland's protests have simmered for months, they say. The city of Portland has been the site of nightly protests for three months since the killing of George Floyd. We know this. At the height of protests, we know all that. The deaths, the deaths have come amid turmoil in other cities. This we understand. Let's move on now to what he said in the interview with Vice News. Insider reports, a man suspected of fatally shooting a Trump supporter during protests in Portland said he saw, quote, a civil war right around the corner and that his shot felt like the beginning of a war. Michael Reinel was named in connection with the death of Aaron Danielson in Portland on Saturday night. Federal agents tried to arrest him late Thursday. This again, we know. He had earlier given an interview discussing the killing, which was broadcast on Thursday by Vice News. Honestly, quote, quote, uh, honestly, I hate to say it, but I see civil war right around the corner. That that shot felt like the beginning of a war. In the interview, Reinald said he was acting in self-defense and believed that he and a friend were about to be stabbed. He told interviewers, you know, a lot of lawyers suggest that I shouldn't even be saying anything, but I feel it's important that the world at least get a little bit of what's really going on. I had no choice. Rhino was under police investigation over the killing of Aaron Danielson, a supporter of the alt-right group Patriot. That's, that's not true. Patriot Prayer is not alt-right, who was taking part in pro-Trump rallies. Rhino said in his interview that he saw the Patriot Prayer protest as threatening. Vice News said that Rhino spoke with a freelance reporter who shared the conversation with Vice. Let me clarify that for you. It seems like Rhino spoke with a friend Somebody who has said in the past that, the, you know, their goal or it appears they were saying their goal was to mainstream Antifa. I don't I don't care to go into the details of the reporter. A lot of people are criticizing Vice News. Vice News got a hold of some footage. They published it. You want to have an argument or a debate about that? Sure, fine. But it would seem like, look, there, there's a fine line between what a reporter is and a sympathizer or a collaborator. And we're at a point right now where there's clear dividing lines. There's literally a division in media, okay? Some reporters are seen as leftists, seen as right. There's no objective reporters anymore, period. Because the left doesn't, there, there's no middle ground. And if there's no middle, there's no objective press. Everyone is going to be criticized for everything they say. Reinhold said, I'm seeing all these vehicles with hatred. People in the backs of trucks yelling and screaming and swinging bats and sticks at protesters that are just standing there yelling at them. He said that he went to help a friend that was surrounded by trucks with armed pro-Trump protesters. I saw someone that is dear and close friend of mine in the movement by himself basically confronting all these vehicles. What vehicles? And so I let him know that I'm here, parked my vehicle and joined up with him, found myself in the intersection in front of the food truck surrounded by trucks and cars that had weapons. 
What? We've seen the video. The intersection's empty. There's a couple vehicles that are questionable. I've brought this up. But the dude then yells, we got him right here. I don't know if it's him who yells it, but then he shoots him. He said a man threatened to stab him and another pro- a protester. Had I stepped forward, he would have maced or stabbed me. Reinald said that he was confident that I did not hit anyone innocent and I made my exit. Bystander video shows a man resembling Reinald fire two shots at Danielson and walk away. Reinald said he did not turn himself into the police because he thought police were collaborating with right wing protesters and they would not protect him. Protests have taken place in Portland since George Floyd was killed. We know all of this. The Times reported that Reinald had regularly protested in recent weeks and acted as a kind of security guard. Randall McCorkle, McCorkle, another protester, told the Times that nightly he would break up fights. Reese uh, Monson, a Portland protest leader who helped organize the protest security, said Rhino was trained in de-escalation and said he was excellent at it. He, we, we, we know what he said. As Business Insider previously reported, Antifa, short for anti-fascist, is a leaderless organization that's not true, that opposes groups it sees as fascist. You, you know, we have a, a serious problem. When journalists who aren't, I don't even know how to, look, you, you, you know, these journalists are just wrong. They don't do their research. They have no idea what they're talking about. Antifa is a brand ideology, and there are many different Antifa groups, and they all have leaders. They're just in autonomous cells. You can't join an Antifa group in Portland unless the leaders approve of you. They have said this much. Do your homework, insider, when it comes to national level rallies, organization, riots, whatever. They will coordinate between each other, but they do have leaders of their cells. Reinhold wrote, I am willing to fight for my brothers and sisters, even if I even if some of them are too ignorant to realize what Antifa truly stands for. We do not want violence, but we will not run from it either. It's all lies. What Antifa says and does the framing they use, they say, oh, there were there were vehicles surrounding us. Well, we've watched the video. That's just ridiculous. Now, there are cars in the street, sure, but there's like two vehicles just sitting there doing nothing. And this guy shoots a Trump supporter in the chest who was not running, who was not lunging at him. You can see a big blast of what appears some kind of mist. Some people have said it's because the Trump supporter was firing pepper spray. But according to witnesses, they believe that the first bullet hit a, a tear gas. Uh, I'm sorry, a mace canister, which caused it to explode. Now, some have pointed out. It could still be self-defense because both individuals appear to be raising some kind of weapon. And it just so happens the guy with the gun. Well, he's the winner in that in that fight. Right. But I, I think that's negated by two things. For one, Rhino fled, obviously. But more importantly, he yells, we got him right here. They are walking towards the Trump supporters. They could have easily just turned around. The Trump supporting guys said that one, the, the friend of the victim we, we turned around when we heard them yell, which means Antifa was approaching them, yelled, we, we got them. The Trump supporters then turn around. Antifa guys could have walked away as soon as they noticed they were there. But, but you know, arguably, I'm sure there could have been some kind of self-defense had he not fled and then gotten to a confrontation with cops. Now, I don't know if he shot at cops because they didn't say that. They said the cops fired into his car, but he, he may have been armed, may have been reaching for a weapon. I don't know. Take a look at this. Andy No says, Antifa Black Block outside the Kelly Penumbra Police Building in Southeast Portland wrote this everywhere on the street. Portland Police Bureau murdered Michael Reinel. Reinel, the Antifa shooter, was wanted by police for killing Aaron Danielson. He was shot dead last night. You killed Michael. Blood on your hands. They support the guy. They absolutely support him. Civil war right around the corner, huh? Let's let's think about this for a second. I try to I try to approach everything uh, as objectively as possible, but I, of course, have my biases. I think these people are unhinged and unrepentant racists. I watch them protest for months, smashing things, organizing. How many Trump rallies have we seen in the past uh, months? Several that went, went went without a hitch, no violence. There were some back the blue rallies, no burning, no looting, no violence, just marches through the street. Peaceful. That's that's normal. All the Antifa stuff, all the Black Lives Matter stuff, typically had fights with cops and smashing of windows. They blame provocateurs. Well, there's no provocateurs in the Trump rallies. No, it's it's the far left. So what we see is regular Americans protesting in favor, in, you know, in, in support of police. Nothing happens. The far left getting extremely violent. 
There's one Trump rally in Portland, and it ends with a Trump supporter killed. And the far left and their allies in media still frame it as though it's the right doing all this. I watched the videos. I've spoken to the witnesses who were there on the ground at the Kyle Rittenhouse situation just last night. And the night before, we had Drew Hernandez of the of At Lives Matter show. He covers Antifa on the ground. Sitting here saying exactly what happened. We had Elijah Schaefer from Slightly Offensive. That's his show saying exactly what happened. They were both on the ground. Antifa had torched a dumpster and was pushing it towards a gas station. And some young people put the fire out, sparking a confrontation. They both said Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself. And Drew said just the other night, Kyle probably would have been killed if he did not defend himself. Now, what about what about the Antifa guy? He's saying the exact same thing. And herein lies the shocking and dangerous reality. Both sides are convinced they're right. I believe based off of witness testimony and the videos we've all seen, this Antifa guy was not acting in self-defense. Absolutely not. He immediately went for his gun, killed the guy and fled. He was walking towards them. There was no initial scuffle. There was no fight. There was no, hey, man, back off. Nothing. It was just literally, we got him right here. And then the, and then the Trump supporter was dead. Kyle Rittenhouse ran. He ran from these people who were attacking him. And then someone fired a gun in the air. And that's when he turned around. And according to the New York Times, the first guy lunged at him and he shot several times, killing this man. He then ran to the police and they hit him, knocked him down. He falls. Then they started beating him on the ground and he shot into self-defense. When a man drew it, put up his hands, Rittenhouse lowered his weapon. That man then jumped forward with a gun and Kyle shot him in the bicep, vaporizing his, 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 his bicep. Rittenhouse is seen on video running to the police saying, I'm going to get the police. This guy didn't do that. This guy actually claimed that he was surrounded by vehicles that were, uh, you know, full of armed Trump supporters. No, I, that does not seem to be the case at all. Perhaps he's a paranoid, delusional individual. Fine. But the far left still supports him. And what that means is when I, I'm, I've been seeing tweets now, I've been seeing tweets from people supporting Reinhold, saying the cops executed him. You know, uh, Rittenhouse is still alive. Think about what that means. And I'm like, but Rittenhouse turned himself in. If he turned himself in, he would be alive. You know, you, they, these people really live in this paranoid state where they think that if he walked into a department and said, you know, I'm the guy, you know, please arrest me. They think that what are the cops going to do right there in front of everyone? Just kill him. That would never happen. Instead, he's armed, dangerous, gets into a confrontation with cops, flees. And they shoot him. There's a video. I can't show it of them performing CPR on this man, trying to save him. Even after all this, even uh, they, 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 I think civil war is, is coming. Perhaps that was the shot heard around the world. You know, a lot of people are, 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 are criticizing me because I've said the Proud Boys should not go to Portland. Most people, however, seem to agree because we know where this is heading. I think that if the Proud Boys go to Portland, this is the next big step. The far left has been fundraising for bulletproof vests. We already saw a dude in Portland get stabbed. Several people have been killed at the Chaz. 33, 34 people are now dead. The conflict is escalating and Antifa is looking for a reason. And they're going to get it because the Proud Boys are going to show up and they're going to say, we have a right to do this. And they do. That's true. You have a right to peaceably, peaceably, peacefully protest. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. This is bad for the press. The media allies of the left are in trouble. Never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. And now the nation is being shocked to see what's happening. A Trump supporter walking down the street was gunned down. What do you think the narrative is going to be at the beginning of October after a couple days of Proud Boys walking through Portland? The narrative is going to be violent right wing militias and far right alt right extremists laid siege to Portland because they know how bad this makes them look. They are going to pull out every organizational uh, favor, every smear tactic, every journalist who would give anti this, this, this murderer the, the ability to, to say his message and Vice News publishes it. And you know what, man? I've said in the past, 
peacefully protest, speak up, be heard, stand up for what you believe in. But I have repeatedly said, do not confront these people. They want it. It's the game they play and they play it better than you. Can a proud boy whoop an Antifa? You betcha. You put an Antifa and a proud boy in in a ring. Guess who's coming out in 10 seconds as the victor? We all know what's going to happen because we've seen the videos. But you take a journalist, one of their allies in media, and what are the Antifa people doing? They have a smile on their face as they walk up and say, oh, no, I'm going to get beaten. And when the proud boy punches them, the photo comes out of an angry dude wearing, you know, the gold trim, punching a guy. And the headline is far right militant white supremacists beat peaceful Black Lives Matter protester. That's what's coming next. I'm telling you. You can disagree with me. That's fine. You can argue it's still your right to go out and peacefully assemble and do all those things. And that's true. It is. I don't care what you do. So long as you're not violent. Antifa is violent. So they get the criticism. But heed my warning. I'm telling you what comes next. The Proud Boys are going to be there. Antifa is looking for a fight. They need vindication because they are the aggressors now and they look bad to the public. So the best thing they can do to hurt Donald Trump is every listen. Joe Biden launched his campaign on the the very fine people hoax, lying about what Trump said. You better believe they are salivating for the opportunity to smear Trump just before the election. And the Proud Boys are going to hand it to him. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all next time.